Good morning. Let's get uh, right into it. We're going to party line uh, with uh, public health. It's a public health party line. And we're going to get uh, pretty serious, though. Uh, Annette Uggen and Dr. Uh, Jana Maglonia. Now, Annette is the... Um, God, Annette. Of communi- it's a long disease. one. It is. I just say she's the head of the Bureau contact of trace. Bureau of communicable. Chief Pumba. <laughs> She's like the boss of the contact uh, trace <laughs> investigation squad. Well, she's over all BCDC, but remembering that none of us are who we are right now. We were borrowed for COVID. Right. And so now that's become our, our new Our main MO. thing. Yep. Uh, and we also have, of course, uh, Dr. Maglotnia, uh, the public health medical director, is a regular on the show. Uh, Miss Annette, could we just uh, start with, uh, we had a restaurant owner on the line, and, uh, you know, people are talking about, the amount of time that transpired from when we first found out about the uh, the first positives out of this uh, unit at Anderson Air Force Base uh, to now. I mean, it's been... Um, okay. Who do we... Is that you, Annette? On? No, I'm here. Okay, Annette's Hello? there, so okay. Annette? Yes, sir. Okay. We'll, we'll get Dr. McGlotnia back on. Uh, so, yeah, people are saying, why didn't they know uh, sooner? And, you know, I, I I know that when we talked last time, you had talked about the difficulties of conducting this investigation without mm-hmm. having the access that you would normally have mm-hmm. when you conduct a contact trace investigation. So, again, did that have anything to do with the amount of time it took us to get the information that was released um, yesterday afternoon? Yes, this is, uh, I would say, an anomaly with the current uh, COVID outbreak. Uh, when we have direct access to uh, our residents or even the ones who came in from off-island, like being quarantined, um, we have uh, a shorter time frame to initiate our case investigation as well as contact tracing. Uh, so yes, this delay uh, is longer than uh, we wanted. Uh, and and uh, again, it, we're relying on information from our military partners to uh, conduct the case investigation with their uh, service members, uh, provide that information over to us, um, regardless if it's inside the gate or outside the gate, uh, as the overall health department for this jurisdiction, uh, the military reports to us any reportable disease to include COVID. So yes, that's that's the part of that's why the delay and um, getting the information and, and getting it out to the public. And again, as we were getting it piecemeal, uh, you know, we were trying to get as complete and accurate information. Uh, and as as you can see, based on the release from last night, uh, we we not only got the the dates, we're looking at which location. Um, was it more than one day? Was it dine-in or takeout for restaurants? Um, you know, uh, and again, the challenge too is these are from off island, and so they some some establishments have more than one location, and so we were trying to narrow down to the specific site so that again we don't want our our residents to panic because you know if they went to those establishments, but was it the one in Dedido or the one right. in Gang? Yeah, yeah, so and I, and I think. That, if you had access to these guys, it would have been as simple as like, which Jamaican girl did you go to? Was it this one? Was it, you yeah, know, show them a picture. And, yeah. Because okay. people were throwing you guys under the bus. And I, I'm, we had such a long interview with the other day. And I was just, my mind was just blown that you guys weren't uh, given the access that you need. Because this is a public health emergency. And people are saying, oh, public health didn't tell anybody. Why are they only telling us now? Well, you only told us now because you just got it from the military. Mm-hmm. Correct. And we were, again, we were trying to get this information as complete as possible, filling filling in the blanks. I mean, we received n- names of certain establishments, but again, we, we didn't want to just throw out this name and then people were like, oh my God, I was there three weeks ago or just yesterday. And, you know, it's we also have to, again, narrow down uh, their visit and di- was it within the, the infectious period. And we actually even went... Um, uh, out of abundance of caution, we added in two extra days to, to widen our, our, you know, our, um, our investigation into and then notifying the public. Uh, so that's why we're saying between June 4th and June 13th, even mm-hmm. though we know, uh, you know, the first case that was reported to us, the symptom onset was around June 8 or 9. And per CDC guidance, infectious period is normally two days before onset, but we went four days just to be more cautious uh, and to let the public know. Uh, and so, yes, this is now our our challenge to get all these employees notified. Uh, and again, we're working with the establishments, and they've been very helpful with uh, you know providing us the list of their employees. 
and now we're going through it with our contact tracers to notify them and to uh, provide them the opportunity to be tested via public health community event or to coordinate one in the, you know, we're looking at one next week. Uh, some of the employees, uh, I believe I mentioned the, the past interview, they're actually taking it and being proactive and sending their employees and right. going to use their insurance. So again, we appreciate that collaboration and partnership uh, to help us, uh, you know, tackle this situation with this military cluster. And, and I'm going I'm to try and bring Dr. Maglotnia uh, back on I just on thought here. what was uh, interesting is when, when you go through this list, I'm echoing. Yeah, that's Dr. Maglotnia. You're, you're back on, Doc. Okay. Okay. Go, yeah. go ahead, Bree. Okay. Yeah, I just thought what was interesting when you look at this list and, and you kind of look at the, the dates and the information that we were receiving. And so, for example, the very first uh, person, a service member over at the reef, they uh, he first started experiencing uh, symptoms, exhibiting symptoms on the 11th, tested positive on the 12th. And according to these dates, uh, some of these service members were still dining out on the 12th and even the 13th, the day after uh, the first positive case came out from the reef. Correct. And again, with, with this unit, they weren't all together. Um, you know, we had to even look at the different uh, outings and uh, trying to see were they all together in the same group. Uh, or were they just, you know, uh, they had separate groups that went out at different dates, different times. Uh, even though, yes, there were 35 in this, in this cluster, they, did, they didn't all hang out together. They, mm. did, they all have different work schedules, right. uh, be it days and well as time. Uh, and so we also had to look at, uh, you know, again, the, are they going out together as a big group or smaller groups? And then, uh, so again, this was a bigger unit that was here. Uh, and so not all of them tested positive. And so some of these uh, dates, there are individuals who went out who are not positive, but again, out of abundance of caution, right. we are listing the places that was reported to us, regardless if there was a positive or, or you know, uh, the ones who tested negative. But these are all the errors that were reported to us, and we wanted to let the public know, to again, to be as complete and accurate as possible, right. uh, and so everyone can try and look back on their uh, outings, you know, in June, and did they happen to cross uh, paths mm -hmm. or, or, or go to these same <laughs> establishments? But if this wasn't the military, say say it was just a bunch of residents staying at the Reef Hotel and someone tested positive, um, same thing, on the 12th, was exhibiting symptoms on the 11th, what would public health do? Uh, we would do the same thing. We would look, uh, are you in the room by yourself or with others? And again, um, these uh, in a hotel, regardless if it's military or local or tourist, you're spread out throughout different floors. Uh, and so we have to definitely uh, dig into or is there any interaction with the positive case or you just happen to be in the same place at the same time but there was no interaction there was no contact um, and so those are the things that we have to really look into and try and narrow down as much as possible could, could i jump in here and say something too um is, is it okay yeah yes, sorry to course. interrupt Nanny. Yeah. i just something really really important here um bottom line if this had been um, a situation involving local residents, our team would have had unfettered access and, and we send the SWAT team in. The nuances with this case is that it involves federal government people and they have their own fleet. And then there's the boundary between us and them, um, not only functionally and, and legally, but um, here's another thing, and, and this is what we're missing. It looks like the Air Force did not provide us timely information. Would you agree to that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. There's a reason. And 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 I obviously am going to hint to it, but um, have you ever watched those crime shows where they bring the guy in and he's guilty as he can be and the minute he sits down he said, I wanna see a, I wanna have a lawyer present and that shuts down the interview? Well, imagine if if and I don't know all the what's going on at the airport or the air force but i can imagine imagine you bring these guys in and they say um i want to speak to an attorney first that pretty well shuts down everything and and i have to imagine there might be those sorts of things going on and and there, there have been little hints of, of um you know when when we say why can't we just have it well there's reasons and so i, I think sometimes when people um you can imagine there's an investigation going on, and so that limits our 
unfettered access. Right, right, yeah. Normally, day to day, not a problem. And Nettie can tell you this too, that we work so closely with the military. But um, when it involves things like these, you know, I, I don't know how far this is going to go, but I don't. I, I can imagine there's going to be some repercussions for this. Right. If it look, if it's a, if it at first blush it looks like what we're seeing. Well, I mean, it, it looks like th this just makes the Air Force look so bad, Doctor. I mean, and that's because, why I'm jumping yeah. in because it's yeah. it's not the Air Force. I promise you, it is not. It's Air Force is being stellar. They, but but. It's sort of like one of these things, and I'm not saying this is what's happening, but um, you, you look at someone and say, can I see your guy? And you go, well, there, there's a step in front of you, you know. And another thing, too, here's, a, here's another nuance about it. You know, do I want to just go on base and get information that the feds come later? Uh, you know, we can say, can, can you just talk to us, you know, and then have the feds come in later and say, I want that. You know, I don't want to get. I want to treat it like we don't know anything at all and just throw out a big net and scoop it all up. Because right. if, if we knew all it's going to do is mirror down our focus, forget it. Just, just sweep up the whole enchilada and move on. Because this is a, a good point here, too. This is a sample of what's happening every day right now, and we don't even know it. Right. We just happen to know those guys are out there. What about the ones in the, in the community we don't know about? Like we had five to six new cases you know where are those people that's that's a fraction of what we just saw from the air air force and and there isn't the fallout from that yeah. so it this is why we have to i hate to switch to my public health hat though please keep your mask on please wash your hands whatever guam's doing it's working so whatever's out there the sharks are out there but we're in insulated boats here because we're not seeing what happened in new york we have 35 guys out there positive and we haven't had a single case in the time for incubation for covid which we look at as 14 days we haven't had a single case from that from those 35 guys because not because of them but because our people are doing what they should be doing so i mean i don't want this to have happened but when you look at it at the end of the day and you go my gosh 35 people on the loose and not one case came out of that i thought there was a reef hotel employee well okay here's another thing um remember what natty said natty sorry to 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 do this to you but but when we have a case we go investigate and one of the things we try to do we get all of your contacts but we're always focused on where you may have been exposed and two things have come from that contact one, it doesn't look like there's a link to the current cluster. Two, it looks like there was a link from the previous cluster. So it, it, at first we grabbed it and went, aha, and then when we started looking at it, we went, ah, nothing burger. You know, this is, this is old news. So, and that was an asymptomatic person, so it may have been, you know, the crumbs that Chris talked about. So... Yeah. Um, and, uh, so I want, it's not the Air Force, got to tell right. you. No, I mean, it makes the Air Force look bad because they have That's these okay. guys who are supposed to be following orders. And, you know, the implication was that there may have been a couple that might have, you know, picked up something across the street. But you look at this, I mean, it's agate, talafofo, all over right. the damn island. That's right. what I'm saying makes the Air Force look bad. Uh, but, Annette, <laughs> yeah. if we could, yeah. have you got all the information that you need from the military? This is all the information they were also able to obtain from the individuals. Uh, as you can see in our table, uh, we do have some missing information. For example, Jamaican Grill, it's unspecified. Uh, you know, and our team went back uh, more than two or three times trying to, to uh, get that information uh, from our partners at Anderson who have the direct access to these individuals. But again, we're talking how many days have passed since these outings. So again, recall has become difficult, or they just they just don't recall it. They don't know. They don't remember. Again, they're not from this island. I mean, we even had to correct some of the names and the villages. And again, that's why it, it did take a while because uh, they were saying some stuff, and we're like, that there's nothing there in that village. I'm from that village, and <laughs> there's nothing with that name. Or they mixed up names, or you know, they're missing some key na words in the name of the establishment. We're like, where are they at? You know, that's that's not very detailed enough. So. Again, this is the best that information provided to us, as complete as possible. Mm -hmm. And, so, you know, we were going back and forth. Should we put Jamaican girl or not? But out of abundance of caution, you know what? Let's put it and 
we're, we're seeing it. We sweep it all up. Them. Sweep it all up. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. we don't know it was shift from 4 to 12, so we'll take them all. So uh, because, because we are limited by what Air Force gives us, Air Force is limited by what is given them. And for whatever reason, that's, you know, whatever. So we have everything that there is available and we have a lot of information. Now, we don't have the specifics like Natty is saying. We don't have what shift. Never mind. Take them all. Because right. here's, here's, another, here's another good reason for that. What if you're working 4 o'clock shift and you know that guy came in at 4 o'clock or that girl, whatever. They came in at 4 o'clock and you go, oh, I'm a contact. Well, the person next to you went, wait a minute. I've been working with you for two weeks. If you got it, I have it. You know, that it's yeah. that sort of thing. So just we bring them all in, and and then never mind the focus. We let's just see what we have. Right, uh, ladies, do do we know if there was any car rental or you know mm -hmm. taxi use, or do they have their own uh, that van that you see them going around in? What we understand uh, is there was their own. Uh, they had the government yes. vehicles as well as there were a few car rentals and so that's already been looked into as well right so, so it's all about the timing of when did they rent the cars uh who was in the vehicle with them uh, and so that's why again it, it leads to how long and difficult this investigation was oh, um, oh. and again it, it we, we can't you know that we, can, we could not have done it without our military partners but also our establishment i mean for this list, we even had an establishment say, no, nope, we weren't open on that date. So uh, what was reported to the military and given to us was a, the wrong date. The establishment themselves said, no, we were closed, so it has to be this date. And wow. we're like, thank you for that correction. We're going to make sure we put that on. So I mean, that, again, that to me, that's uh, troubling because it, you're just getting the information, uh, you know, second, third hand. <laughs> why, why isn't, why isn't there any uh, car rental, though, on this list? Uh, because again, it, it, it's the timing of when these individuals were symptomatic and their infectious period, and so that's not, that's why uh, whatever establishment is reported to us, we look at the time frame, uh, the use of the vehicle, uh, when they went to these, and again, that's why above the statement we're saying between June 4th and June 13th, even though these are the dates within the table that were reported that they went to these establishments, we're saying go wider look at june 4th to june 13th where you at any right. of these establishments so it didn't make the it didn't make the cut but if it did if something else trickles in today if they get all oh, another whatever it'll be added mm -hmm. so but, what's but on again your... we're 14 day, we're almost 14 days out right. so already right. yeah. and 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 so now as we look back we go who dodged 35 bullets you know it's it's I, and I, I can't explain that except... Are, is that what we're thinking, Doc, that, that we're clear from this incident because it's been 14 days? I can say, uh, well, that that's the metric we use. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and when I say clear from it, I, I can all I can say is we haven't had any fallout, not a single case attached to it. Right. And, and I don't say that that's, oh, the germ's weakening. It's not that. I think Guam, okay, you had these guys out with or without masks, who knows? But probably where they went, they had masks on, yes, and they had shields. So, I I don't care how many sharks are out there. If we're in a yacht, I don't care. And so, if one stays in the yacht and washes their hands and, and wears their mask, I wouldn't have predicted this. I would have thought something would have happened. But now, as we look back, I, I, you know, we're scratching our heads, going, "Wow!" And Guam still made it through. You right. know. I, I mean, can so, we? Can are you so, guys done enough with this investigation for you to be able to say confidently that we made it through? Or so far, we have, so, far so far, yes, uh, we have. Uh, uh, we're still ongoing. Correct. We have a couple of more days to get out of that 14-day period. 14 days, doctor, right? Yes. So we're 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 monitoring that. But as doc, I want to add on to what Doctor uh, Jana mentioned is that you know these establishments have really stepped up. And, I, and in that, uh, the fact that we don't have as, uh, you know, like Dr. Jenna said, no cases linked to these, this cluster is, is a testament to the establishment uh, doing that, uh, going the extra mile, right. ensuring that their staff as well as the other patrons are safe. They're, exactly. they're implementing their social distancing measures, their sanitation, and their disinfecting measures. So, again, it's a testament to what uh, the, these establishments and our, our other key partners, the Guam Hotel Restaurant Association, They've worked with us from the beginning, even before we had the first COVID case, um, case uh, you know, to work with their membership. And again, it's all about this partnership and, and helping each other out. So again, I, I, you know, this is a shout out to those establishments that they're And the people. They're safe. Yes. 
Yeah, and the people. Uh, But two weeks ago, if you had asked Natty and me, hey, we want to do a pilot program. We want to send out 35, you know, visiting airmen and and who are positive into the community and let's see what happens. Natty and I would have run for Saipan. We would have gotten (laughs) out of here. But now we have been handed two spectacular situations um, with the Teddy Roosevelt. Look at that. That could have been a fiasco, but contained stellar response from everyone, collaboration out the wazoo, and, and, and they sailed off with a smile and a kiss. But, and, and this one, we look back, we wouldn't have asked for this, but we got handed it, and because of the establishments and their response, because of the Guam um, response wearing masks, which people are so tired of, believe me, uh, sometimes it's the first thing um, people rip off in an office, and you're like, don't get naked, don't get naked, you know, because you see a mouth, you know, but <laughs> because because it happened, you know, it was handed to us, we now look back and go, wow, it's working, and, and, and now I don't want any more. I don't want another 35 cluster, but, but I mean, look, all the things that we're saying do to, to help prevent it apparently really work. Mm-hmm. Well, that's but, why we're doing them. Correct. Yes. But also yes. So please on keep on. on. <laughs> yeah. So what so discussions? Don't let down the guard. Please don't let down your guard. All right. So what? Yeah. Yeah. It, so it's obvious that um, our local establishments, the people of Guam, have been doing their part. So, as you mentioned, we're not seeing um, any sort of uh, activity or positive positive tests related or linked to uh, this cluster. But what assurances um, have we received, or has public health received, that going forward, this does not happen again? That the military is doing what it's supposed to do to ensure. That whenever any deployed unit uh, service members are coming here, that they are following the rules. Right. Yeah. I, I asked that question. Go ahead, Nettie. Yeah. So we've had uh, follow-up meetings at uh, our level, public health, uh, with the military public health on Anderson, uh, and they've already all provided uh, corrective action uh, to change, uh, you know, how moving forward, how these deployed units that come through the Guam. Uh, we'll be quarantined. Uh, we've also, through the at the governor's level, to the uh, General Manonia, you know, with the Joint Region Marianas, that also is uh, brought at that level to ensure again any corrective actions and improvements uh, will be implemented. Because again, this is a year round where we get uh, deployed units, and again, uh, varying lengths of time that they're here on Guam, and so definitely this is something that Anderson themselves they don't want to repeat of this. And the right. Joint Region Marianas for both Navy and Air Force uh, w- does not want this to happen again because, yes, it, it, this should not have happened to begin with. This is new to everyone. And, and I don't think any time that I can remember a unit has been told to come to a place to, to facilitate activities there and been said and been told not to leave the room. You know, that's, that's, it's unprecedented. And, and another thing, too, I'm flipping gears for a moment, uh, just a minute, if you look back, if they came in on May 25th, I think was the original date that was put in the paper, and, and you add up the days, day 14 was actually the date, days before the positive test came in, so they would have been released a couple days of that anyway if we just went. I don't know how they're doing a quarantine, but if it were um, Guam side at 14 days and no symptoms, you're allowed to go out and about. And if that's the case with their structure, I don't know, they would have been released for a couple of days anyway. And that's why we have to keep our guard up. Because even if things had been um, mm. put to the T, there's still a couple of days there that we could have had people out who were positive and didn't even know it. Mm-hmm. So that's why, no matter what, we can't put our, leave our guards down. We can't. Not yet. There, maybe a year from now we'll have a show and say, okay, Toss the mask. We're going to have a mask burning party. We're not there yet because mm-hmm. even though Guam's under control, Guam now has the work of staying under control. And so that's why our messaging, messaging cannot stop because this is an oops. And we don't know if there's going to be another oops tomorrow, not from the military, but some huge company that brings in people for a fiesta. We, we don't know. So keep the mask on. Keep hand washing going because Guam is standing strong. Uh, Doc- have we... Have we been able to determine how this service member, the, uh, number one, uh, the one on the 12th, contracted COVID? Did did he bring it in or did he contract it 
on Guam? Who knows? No, There's no test not. that will tell you that. Right. And oh, you're sitting there with the math tables just like we are going, okay, scratch, scratch, count, back where it could be. And that's why we have to put out a big net and say, check everyone. You know, they're going to have to do something on their end where he came from. They do work like we do. They have to go back, and they have to do that research on their own, wherever these units came from. Doc, can, but, you, uh, can you tell us so which? We don't know. We just don't know. Okay. All right. Can you tell us which uh, cluster that uh, Reef Hotel Positive was associated with or linked with? No. Um, just no. Um, we suspect a certain cluster. It's, is it a Glacier um, Cristo or Hoffa de Bingo? Because there's only a couple of right, clusters that we, that we know about. Um, no. Blink if it's a Glacier Cristo. <laughs> <laughs> Hang up the phone if it's a glacier to Chris. <laughs> Chris, I think it was from your neighborhood. I really do. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> Let me move yeah. away real quick. <laughs> I already had a bunch of airmen dining in my village, so what do I... <laughs> bring it on. Oh, bring it away from him. I know, I, I moved over. <laughs> well, well, we know you guys got a, a big meeting. Is there anything else you think the people of Guam... And we'll start with Annette. Uh, is there anything else as the lead contact trace uh, investigator? Is there anything else the people of Guam... A need to know about these establishments and uh, your investigation again we've been working with them uh, and they have been providing us all the information we need we continue to contact all these employees and again uh, just to point out if you get a call from someone who claims they're from public health uh, and you're not too sure by all means call that number back to verify because we are using all means of communication being landline or cell phone with you know work work related cell phone so I know there's some um, people questioning, is that a, really a public health employee? Yes, we are going on and we're calling all the individuals that have been provided to us by these establishments. And again, monitor yourself for any family members for signs and symptoms. Seek medical care. Because again, it may not be from exposure to, uh, you know, cases that we know about. There might be there, again, there's several who are asymptomatic and going around doing, you know, about their normal business. But again, to take the necessary precautions as mentioned by Dr. Manglonia, and seek medical care if you're symptomatic, if you are concerned, take advantage of the community-based testing. It's going on right now in Jotnia from 9 to 12. Uh, seek your medical provider to get testing done as well through them. Um, and we will be announcing in the future, uh, as mentioned in the release, uh, there will be something planned next week for another community-based testing uh, for the employees and anyone who, during the time frame noted of June 4th to June 13th, May have been at these establishments, uh, right. so they can develop that testing next week, which will be announced date, time, and location. Um, and again, please don't let your guard down. Uh, it's a community effort. It's everyone's responsibility. It's not just public health. Everyone has to take their own personal responsibility to ensure their safety, as well as those around us. It's one island, uh, and so we appreciate all the support. Uh, and again, the social distancing measures being followed and implemented. Uh, so thank you again for helping us get the word out. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Doc. <laughs> Can I have some parting words? Yeah. Yes. Tell me. Okay. I want to point out another thing too. Um, again, I want to really emphasize: we work so closely with the military. It's not the Air Force. It's just that when there's any investigation, which you can imagine is ongoing, everything gets limited and shut down a little bit pending the investigation. So that's why we went, okay, no problem. If that's, we don't know exactly what their workings are. We said, let's put out a big net. Forget the shift. We'll take all the shifts. And, and, and a Jamaican girl will just, we'll include everyone. And we'll just bypass that because and let them do their thing. So it's not the Air Force. We've gotten everything the Air Force can share. And, and so um, we just moved on it. Um, so this is a biggie, too. We don't have... They, none of those 35 men are sick. Not one is hospitalized. And this is in contrast to what we saw early on. I don't have an explanation for that, but I'm cheering it. Mm -hmm. And also, we don't have anyone here in the hospital with it. So whatever's happened, um, and that's the thing that's really bad. If it's like the flu and you stay home and get the sniffles, it's one thing. If it overwhelms the, the hospital situation and, and the capacity, like New York, then we're in trouble. Right. We haven't seen that. We haven't seen a single case attached to it because Guam and the establishment, we are rallying our efforts and it's working. And, and uh, moving forward, we have ongoing meetings with the military um, about uh, this and in the future, but it was a problem. 
ever anyway. Mm -hmm. But but just to to hold as we all go through this, Mm because they're our brothers and we want and our protectors. Yeah, you know, it just feels like we just went through like a one of those live fire military training exercises, (laughs) and we had no idea we were doing it. Your promotion came through. (laughs) (laughs) My God. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Doc. Thank you, Annette. Thank I can take 20 more minutes. I got you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good meeting. Thanks, Keep Doc. Thanks, Annette. Thank you all. Thank Wash you. your hands. All right. Uh, 737. We got to take a short break. And uh, she's not seeking re-election. We'll uh, break uh, bread and have a few words with Senator Regine Bisco lee And then uh, we're going to catch up with uh, PD Mayor Jesse uh, Allig uh, this morning. I uh, got some uh, information you guys are going to know about your uh, village mayors. That's coming up here on Containing COVID. Good morning. Keeping you informed, KUAM News brings you Banking 671, brought to you by the Bank of Guam, the People's Bank,